be making bases. What's good YouTube, Beat Making Basics, back again with another dope video. If you're new to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe as well as give me a thumbs up and leave a comment on the video if you like the content. But without further ado, let's jump right in. I wanted to share a couple of do's and don'ts when it comes to mixing, especially if you are an, a beginner level producer or just getting started making beats. But this, these tips are actually good for people who um, have been making beats for a long time as well, man. So let's go ahead and get into tip number one. So first things first, after you make your beat, you feel like it's solid and all that. Um, the do and don't on this is going to be this. Do use a reference track, okay? And don't not use one, okay? Uh, those are kind of simultaneous. They kind of go together. Um, sometimes you can get into a vein of saying, all right, I know how this should sound and you're just mixing it and woo woo, you know, but I'm telling you, it, it, it really will pay off in your mix. If you, you go ahead and use a reference track. Now you might be asking, Hey, what is a reference track? Well, a reference track is just a, a beat or, you know, since we're mixing beats and we're talking about making beats in this channel a beat that is already professionally mixed, mastered, and released, okay? Now, how would you find these beats? Now, simple. You can just go to YouTube and look up some of the top producers. So whatever top producer that might be on BeatStars or Airbit that makes the type of music that you uh, want to make or are making, you research who, who these people are. You go to the BeatStars platform, see who's at the top of the charts, and or the, the air bit and then you do go look their beats up online and you listen to them now you, the reason why you want to look up these top guys on youtube is say if you're going to be doing youtube beats you want to know you know why is your competition selling okay it's not just in how dope the beat is okay it's all in the mix as well everything matters so you know a lot of times we want to just rush and do things real quick and just put stuff up but I'm telling you, y'all, the mix matters. Um, I'm actually in a phase of going ahead and putting my beats back on YouTube. I took them down and was just focusing on placements and different things like that. But I was like, you know what? I need to put these back on YouTube. And I would suggest that if you're a producer watching this channel, you're struggling with the idea of YouTube or not, to put your beats on YouTube. Reason why? I mean, a lot of people are able to, you know, find you on YouTube. You know, you don't, if you say, if you're DMing a bunch of people every day, OK, you could only DM a certain amount of people. But if your beats on YouTube, a platform that's um, available for billions and millions of people to consume, chances are there's going to be people on there that would find your music that normally wouldn't if you're just DMing people or even if running an ad. So I'm putting my beats back on YouTube and I just wanted to give you all these tips or just do or don'ts. Um, just to help you, too, as I'm going through the process of going through my beats and putting them back up. Um, but anyway, that's that's going to be the major do and don't use a reference track. Yo, you got to do it. You can just go to YouTube and play their beat for a little bit. And things you're listening for is um, how things are sitting in the mix. OK, along with the do's and don'ts. OK, the second do and don't is going to be that you want to. Okay, do listen to your beat on lower levels, okay? Meaning, and, and don't listen to it super blare, blaring all the way to the max, okay? When you crank your beat up and you listen to it and you're mixing it when it's at super high levels, what you're going to do is miss some things sonically um, that you're not going to necessarily hear in the mix when it's all the way up. So what you want to do is go to your digital audio interface, okay? How you're playing the beats back to yourself. You want to turn that down very low, almost to the point where you could talk over that beat. Like literally can't, it's not blaring too crazy. And you want to just critically listen to it. And when you turn it down like that, what you're going to be able to hear is, say if a snare is too loud or too soft, or if a hi-hat is too loud or a kick is too loud, you're going to hear those little nuances, okay? Um, and so do 
mix your music on lower levels and don't mix it on higher levels okay so those are our do's and don'ts man and you know you want to use a reference track and you want to mix your music on lower levels and i'm just telling you um these are going to be some things that's going to drastically help your music and help your mix all right i have this beat right here i'll let you hear some of this this is going to be going online today so you might as well go ahead and be able to hear it i'll let you um hear some of this beat so this is a beat i just mixed and I, before i play this beat a lot of people i had a particular person reach out to me from the channel it's like hey man i want my beats to you know punch real hard and i thought about that for a while and i, I was like man you know i want i want that to happen too but it's really in the mix man you know what I'm saying like you, you we've been con conditioned and trained to think that your music has to be extremely loud. Like if it's not punching super loud to the where it's like at the very limit of how loud it can be, then it's not going to be a good beat. Actually, mixing is not all about making it loud. It's about making the sounds balanced. You feel me? It's about balancing the sounds out in the spectrum of different things. So like an EQ in, in a frequency range, you want to balance things out there. You want to balance things out leveling wise. This is what mixing is, mixing is about. Mastering is about pushing the level up some, you know what I mean? But even in mastering, it's not necessary for you to just punch your mix so hard, okay? And um, you, it's, it's about the level. So I'm going to let you listen to the beat. We're just going to play maybe the intro and the hook, and just, you can just hear what I did here. And I'll tell you some of the things that I changed once I used a reference track, okay? So check this out. So that's a little taste of the beat. Um, one thing that I changed, okay, when I first made the beat and, and mixed it real quick um, without using the reference track, is I noticed that my hi hats were way too loud, okay? Sometimes we can get into this realm of thinking, hey, man, I already got this down. I don't need to use the reference track. And it's really what we're doing is we're being lazy. We're, we're trying to skip steps. And so I had to go back to my music and listen to it. I A beat it with another producer's beats. And I was like, wow, okay, I can see a difference just by turning these hi hats down, maybe pan listen to where they're panning their hi hats, panning certain things. And I was like, man, okay, that drastically helped my beat. Also, another thing that I noticed I had going on is the clap and the snare were way too loud. And this is just stuff that I listened to based off of my reference tracks, okay? Um, I also knew, you know, was able to figure out, okay, this is where that 808 will sound good, you know, um, based on this reference track. And so I'm telling you, this is the, don't underestimate these tips that I'm giving y'all, man. This is some golden goose egg type stuff, man. I'm talking about, you know, Willy Wonka golden ticket type stuff. Like this is some stuff that's really going to help accelerate your skills, man. And, and it's stuff that I already knew and practiced, but sometimes, like I said, you get lazy and you're like, I'm not going to, you know, A, B my track with a reference track. No, I don't need to do that. I already know how it's supposed to sound. And then next thing you know, you're you're putting your music out and you're wondering why it's not getting the traction that it needs to get. And it's because of your mix. So anyway, y'all, I'm not going to continue to talk your heads off. I gave you some good two, two uh, do's and don'ts. Um, again, we'll, re we'll review it. Do use reference tracks. Don't not use them. And do mix your music on lower volume levels and don't not mix it on lower volume levels okay so anyway y'all give me a thumbs up if you like the content give me a comment if you want to hear about something else or you have a topic that you want to talk about or if you just want to chime in on this discussion or um just anything you know what i'm saying and make sure you get subscribed also I, i'm making sure that i go ahead and tell all my subscribers this before i end my videos i do have a free course that i am offering for a limited time um, basically, I'm giving you the free course in exchange for your email. I want to stay in contact with you. And then I also want to be able to offer you other products 
as I release them because I'm working on releasing more products. Um, when you get this free course, you're going to be giving um, an opportunity to get um, a pack, a bundle of courses that's really going to help take your beats to the next level. Um, this bundle pack is called the Advanced Beat Making Skills Bundle. It has literally five full courses, literally almost 100 videos, um, all teaching you how to make beats, covering different topics. I mean, you know, you may basically want to make sure you check that out. But the free course is hard as, as well. It's, it's a dope course. It is literally something I'm selling right now on other platforms, but I'm giving it away for free um, to people who are interested in learning more and were willing to give me their email address and stay, you know, in touch with me. And so anyway, y'all, thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next video.